Hi everybody, today I want to give you my SNU review and specifically I want to talk about the process of renting a SNU. In our vain attempts to get through the dreaded 4 month sleep regression, we tried renting a SNU to get through some of those tougher months and now I'm here to give you all the information you need to decide whether you should buy, rent, or pass on this gadget. First things first, what is a SNU? Well, the SNU is a smart bassinet that's supposed to react to your baby's fussing by providing different levels of motion and white noise to calm them down at night. So theoretically, this is supposed to save you getting up out of bed, picking up your baby and trusting them back to sleep. Sounds great, right? Well, the SNU has some cool features, but it also has a bunch of downsides and I'm gonna go through everything so that you have all the information you need to make a decision. First things first, price. Buying a brand new SNU is gonna set you back, wait for it, $1,495 before taxes. They do have Black Friday sales that can save you a lot of money, but even with the sale, it's one of the most expensive, if not the most expensive bassinet on the market. Renting a SNU, which is what we did, is going to cost you $149 a month. And we got it on a sale, so it cost us about $120 a month. And besides the monthly rate, there's a couple of additional fees that you're gonna be paying. First of all, there's an initial $99 refundable deposit you have to put down when you rent the SNU. There's an $89.50 reconditioning fee, which basically goes towards cleaning, sanitizing, and preparing your SNU for the next rental, as well as a $59.50 return shipping fee for when you send it back. Now you have to send the SNU back in the original packaging, which is a real pain in the behind because it's got a ton of packaging, which takes up a ton of room. If you happen to lose that packaging or throw it away, you're gonna have to pay almost an additional $50 to get new packaging sent to you so you can ship it back to them. And if you decide not to ship it back in the original packaging, you're basically taking liability that there could be some severe damage done to the SNU and they're gonna hit you with those charges. So all in all, even if you rent the SNU for only two or three months, which is pretty reasonable for the rental period, you're looking at between $450 and $600. For comparison, the Graco bassinet that we used for the first eight months of our daughter's life, except this little stint with the SNU, cost us $169 total. The crib we ended up buying our daughter when she was nine months old, the Nestig, which I wish we had bought when she was just born, includes a mini bassinet for newborns, a full crib for infants, and then it converts into a toddler bed, and all that costs $600. And that's considered expensive. So price is definitely a huge downside when you're buying a SNU, and for that kind of dough, you're expecting to get some major value. So what do you actually get with the SNU? How does the SNU actually work? Well, the SNU is supposed to react to your baby's fussing, and the way it does this is by basically listening to the amount of sound that your baby makes at night, and based on that, it changes the intensity of the motion and the volume and type of white noise that it plays for the baby. And it has several different levels of motion and white noise, and it'll ramp them up if your baby continues crying until the baby comes in. Now, if your baby's hit the highest level of white noise and motion and still hasn't calmed down, then the SNU's gonna stop everything and send you a notification to the app telling you that your baby needs to get some attention. And hopefully you've noticed by now that your baby needs attention because they've been crying for a while. Now, the SNU also comes with its own special swaddle and you have to use the swaddle if you wanna activate the motion. The difference between this swaddle and like a regular sleep sack is that uh, the wings with the Velcro that actually hold the baby's um, arms tight are on the inside and then it zips up on the outside. So it keeps them real nice and snug. And then it's got these two little wings kind of on the back. And these have uh, holes that slide onto clips on the mattress of the snoo. And that acts as a safety mechanism. So the motion's not gonna start unless you have these things slipped onto those clips. Side note about the safety mechanism, sometimes it ends up actually being counterproductive to putting the baby to sleep, which can get a little frustrating. You basically have two options. So option number one, you put them in the sleep sack and then you kind of, you know, rock them down until they're drowsy. And then you put them down and then you have to stretch those wings until you can put them onto the clips. Your other option is you put those wings on the clips first and leave the sleep sack on the mattress, rock your baby down to sleep, and then put them down and swaddle them uh, after they're drowsy. So either way, there's some unnecessary messing around with the baby when they're already ready to go to sleep. After a bit of a learning curve, we actually managed to find a process that would help us put her down to bed smoothly where we uh, put her in the sleep sack first, and after we got her a little bit drowsy, we put her down, we stretched those wings over, and then we immediately bumped it up to like level two or three of the motion and sound, so that helped her calm down quickly because she did get restless as soon as you uh, start messing around with those elastic wings. And my biggest personal peeve with the SNU is their definition of fussing. As I mentioned, the SNU is sound activated, so it's basically not gonna do anything until your baby is either whining or crying during the night. And I don't know if this is all babies, but our daughter anyway, her fussing usually started with her like 
throwing her head around from side to side, and then she would take both legs and just drop kick the mat just as hard as she possibly could. I have no idea why, but that would definitely wake us up, but it wouldn't even tingle the smooth spider sense. And so we basically would have to watch her do that and just wait for her to start crying until the smooth reacted. Of course, we did have the option to, you know, take our app out and start playing with it on our own, but, you know, I feel like if you're paying $1,500 for a smart bassinet, they really should figure out a way to make that automatic. I will give credit to the snoo that there were many nights that our daughter did wake up just crying right off the bat, and it did manage to get her back down without us having to intervene, which is really nice when you're just dead tired and going through that four-month sleep regression. Another nice thing is that the white noise that the snoo makes is actually super calming, and it's a little bit different than other white noises that have like little heartbeats embedded inside and different things like that. So it was actually really calming for us as the parents and helped us go to sleep better. However, in my opinion, the idea of the snoo rocking your baby all night or rocking them back to sleep when they start crying is really a bad idea. I think it sets up a crutch for the baby and it's a bad habit both for the parents and the baby in terms of getting used to sleeping. And besides that, I think you lose a little bit of that bonding that you get to do with your baby when you wake up in the middle of the night and you hold them and they feel safe with you. I mean, that's an experience that you're not going to get back and you're kind of just delegating it to a robot. Uh, that's just a personal opinion. Of course, some people really value their sleep and they're just like, ah, let's let the machine take care of it. But I think that you do lose something with that. And besides, uh, knowing what I know now about how to put a baby down to sleep and get them sleeping through the night, I think that this really does set you up for a long-term struggle. Yes, it's going to give you some short-term reprieve uh, with the four-month sleep regression and getting the baby down when they're waking up multiple times at night, but in the long term, it's going to make sleep training that much harder. And one final thing that really annoyed me about the snoo is the fact that you have to send it back on the original packaging. The original packaging is huge, okay? We lived in a small two-bedroom apartment and the boxes, when they're all spread out and everything, they basically covered the whole area under our queen size bed, which made it much harder to clean. You couldn't stick anything else under there. And you basically have to keep this packaging around for months. If you don't want to keep this packaging around, then you're going to have to pay another 50 bucks in order for them to ship you new packaging so you can ship it back to them in the original packaging. Of course, this isn't a problem if you're buying the snoo, but if you're renting the snoo like we did, then you're going to have to be stuck with a bunch of giant pieces of cardboard for several months. So I've ranted a little bit about the snoo and some of the things that I think are downsides with it. Let me give a couple of positive points. First of all, the assembly is really simple. No tools required. Uh, basically, you just have the body of the bassinet and then you've got four legs and a power cord. And the legs are color coded. So all you have to do is flip the bassinet upside down, snap each leg into the uh, corresponding slot and then hand tighten the screw, plug the power cord in the middle. And then you have a little groove on each leg where you can run the power cord so it's not a trip hazard. And total, it probably takes about five minutes to assemble the snoo once you've got it out of the packaging, which is a lot less than the time it takes to put together like a wooden uh, bassinet or crib. Like for example, the Nestic took me about 20 minutes to put together the full size crib and I needed to have some screwdrivers and Allen wrenches and things like that. So assembly is really simple with the snoo. An additional cool feature that the snoo has is that it comes with its own app and this app basically acts as a sleep journal for your baby. It tracks your baby's sleep time and fussing time based on the level of motion that the snoo is applying at each point. And you get this little journal which shows you uh, in red if uh, your baby was fussing, how long it took them to calm down, and in blue is uh, uninterrupted sleep. So you basically get a sleep log that tells you uh, how much your baby is sleeping, when they woke up, uh, what level of motion the snoo had to get to to calm them down, how long it took them to calm down, and that's really nice. The app also sends you articles from uh, Dr. Harvey Karp's team, which kind of like give you information about your baby's sleep patterns and what to expect based on their age, which is calculated based on information that you put into your profile in the app. So you're getting relevant information all the time about your baby's sleep, which is also nice. Uh, to be honest, I never read those, but I'm sure that they would have been uh, nice and informational if I had. The app also lets you manually control the motion and sound levels. So for example, like I mentioned, we found that our daughter needed a little bit more motion at the beginning to get her to sleep so we could uh, manually plug that in as soon as we put her down. And it also lets you limit what the highest level of motion that it's going to reach is if you don't want your baby being, uh, you know, rocked as if they're having a seizure, which is what it kind of feels like when it goes to level red. Uh, it's a little bit scary when you see it the first time, to be honest. And another thing that the app lets you do is use a weaning mode 
where the default is that the snooze gonna calmly rock your baby all night. And if you use weaning mode, then there's gonna be no motion or sound until your baby starts fussing, and then it'll start moving just to calm them down. So just to summarize, as you may have guessed, I do not recommend either renting or buying the snoo. In my opinion, this is just an overpriced gadget that is gonna give you some reprieve in the short term, but in the long term, it's gonna be a crutch and it's gonna actually make it harder to sleep train your baby. In my opinion, you're better off getting a regular crib that they'll be comfortable in and instilling good sleep habits and routines from the start is gonna be much more important. And if you're interested in more information about the four month sleep regression or how to sleep train your baby, check out the video I made on that. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. As always, thank you all for watching. See you all next time.